Welcome to Kiko Vision, a podcast to pump you up to change the world. Hosted by me, Jordana. Let's get started. Hi, and welcome to Kiko Vision with Jordana. In this episode of Kiko Vision, we're going to talk about fines and cash bail. I know that that is a lot of fun, but it has impacted a lot of people and it is very important. So, Last week, I released an episode of Utopia vs. Dystopia on this topic, and it's a short one. It's about 14 minutes. I think all of the clips are John Oliver clips because I love John Oliver, and he puts things in a way that it's just easy to understand and funny. So definitely check that out if you haven't got the full clips also included online. I consider myself incredibly fortunate. And I still have friends and family members who I love and care about, whose lives have been impacted. I'm not talking about superficially. I'm talking about losing their license and having to choose between driving to work on a suspended license or losing their job or ending up on probation. They were stuck in what John Oliver describes as a hamster wheel of hell. This isn't something that you'll be able to shield your loved ones from for long. If I'm right, on where our current direction is leading us, it's important for you to pay attention because this will impact you. If you watch these clips, it'll become clear that one person's inconvenience is another person's nightmare. And so many people live in fear. And this is why a lot of people fear the police because one incident could derail their lives. And I'm putting aside for now, and I will address it in a later episode, that there's a whole nother reason why people of color fear the police. And you might think, there's no way something like getting a couple of parking tickets could land you in jail or could make you lose your license and job. But it's happening all the time. It's not black versus white. It's rich versus poor. And it happens to be that a lot of people of color fall into the latter category. We know that this is a systemic problem. So why do we allow it to happen? Why do we accept it? Why do we let our citizens be treated this way? There are some towns that more than 50% of their income of how they fund their government is through fines. Police are in many cases incentivized to write tickets. And if you can't pay those tickets, life can get very difficult. Because not only do you have to pay the ticket, you'll have to pay the fines that are associated with it. So now there's private companies that will step in and will manage the financial aspect of it. And they charge a lot to do that. And they charge it all to the citizen, which could end up being multiples of the initial amount. Why is everything so much more expensive if you're poor? People are ending up on probation because they don't have the money to pay for traffic violations. And then every bit of money that they send in goes to the fees for probation before it goes to the initial fine. And for somebody who's living on minimum wage, they could be put on probation There's an incident in the Utopia vs. Dystopia series where somebody ends up on probation for a $41 fine and just continued to have to pay more and more without seeing a decrease in the amount owed on the fine. And then when you start to talk about cash bail and the position that it puts people in, 97% of our trials end in plea agreements. And so people are faced with the decision of, do they have enough money to post bail? And if they don't, do they sit in jail and lose their job? Or do they take a plea and regardless of whether they're innocent or guilty, they're able to stay out of jail, and 
potentially maintain their job. It puts people in a situation where they lack options. They lack any good options, at least. And I want you to pay attention to this. Because once we have unfair rules in place, they can be used against you as well. And maybe not right now. Maybe you have the money that you can afford a lawyer and you can get yourself out of it. But how long until you can't or until somebody that you love can't? Unless you're Jeff Bezos or Elon Musk or Bill Gates or Warren Buffett, you are one bad day away from being placed into that world. If I could protect everyone I care about, I totally would. But I can't. I'm not in that position. And usually when I find out about things, it's too late to do anything anyways. I found out that my cousin's daughter, who had one of the worst high school experiences I could ever imagine, she lost multiple friends, including her best friend. She got a felony charge for weed as an adult, but still a teenager. It's a plant. It's a plant that's legal in the state of Pennsylvania where she lives. But it's only legal if you have enough money to get a doctor to prescribe you a prescription and maintain that prescription and register with the state and get a medical card. She didn't have that money. And she didn't have a lawyer. And by the time I found out about it, all I could do was smack my cousin and say, why didn't you tell me? Because I would have found a way to help her. And then my other cousin, he lost his license for financial reasons and continued to drive because that was the only way that he could get to work and continued to get pulled over. I don't know how long he lost his license for altogether, but it was years. Longer than if he was driving under the influence, but it was because he couldn't afford it. You should either think these rules are fair for everyone or they're not. And if you don't want to be in the situation that the people in this video are in, then now is the time to speak up. Because if you try to speak up when the injustice is, in, uh, is against you, you're going to lose, as my dad would say. It's going to be you versus the man and you are going to lose. So we need to come together and say that this is unacceptable, that we are not OK with our government ripping off its citizens like this. If getting pulled over is an inconvenience to you and and that's it, you don't have to worry about where you're going to come up with money to pay a lawyer or to pay fees and fines and an increase in insurance premiums, if that doesn't, if that's not a concern for you, you should consider yourself blessed. But even if that's not a concern for you, you are still affected, always knowing that there is that second world that we could be thrown into at any moment. And if we get thrown into that world, our expectations versus our reality will crush us. And when I say us here, let me be clear, because this is a podcast. I am talking about white America. The sad reality is that people of color, they expect this from us. They know how shitty this other world is. This world was created to exploit and to oppress them. And white America was okay with it. But now white America and white Americans and hard workers are falling into it. We expected that we could work hard and raise a family because that's what previous generations could do. And we're killing ourselves to the point that it's affecting our lifespan. It has reduced the overall lifespan, expected lifespan of Americans. 
So look, if you don't want to stick up for racial equality because it's the right fucking thing to do, then do it because it's in your best interest. And this is where I, I really struggle because this conversation is so divisive. It just turns people off. But look, we don't need to agree on the origins of this, um, white male property owners. We just need to agree that everybody should be treated with respect. We shouldn't be kicking those who are already down. We shouldn't be ripping off the poor. We need to just be united and say that this is unacceptable. And this is why I say we need to form a group outside of political party affiliations. This affects Republicans. This affects Democrats. This affects blacks, whites, rich, poor. We need strength to fight for hardworking Americans. And that is going to be the way to force political change. Imagine if there was a company like Amazon, but fighting for societal good. I'm going to reach out to Robert Reich because I recently saw his documentary, Saving Capitalism, and it is awesome. And he's absolutely right. Look, we need to fight fire with fire. I really hope he joins me because he has some other great work as well. And he has devoted his life to leveling out this imbalance. I have links to some of his work online, which I will put on the podcast page as well. But when we let special interests write the rules and when we let billionaires fund them, Everyday Americans will lose every time. Since this podcast is new, we have no sponsors. So I will shamelessly plug Keiko. And if you get sick of hearing this, then reach out to become a sponsor. Keiko, the social app. K-A-K-O. Keiko, the social app. K-A-K-O. Keiko, the social app. Keiko rules. Keiko the social app. Billionaire greed. <laughs> Keiko the social app. Oh. Destroying America. Keiko the social app. T minus seven years and counting. Keiko the social app. You may not realize it, but your body knows. Every time you want to go tell your boss what you think of him or her, Every time you put up with something that you wouldn't have put up with had there been another option, everybody lives in fear that they're going to end up in this other world. Whether that's a conscious realization or not, your body knows. And the stress that puts on your body has serious medical implications. So in this Utopia vs. Dystopia episode, you see the difference in treatment, in reaction to the police from a white, privileged, we'll call her Karen. Though, I would really appreciate if we could rename the white, privileged female Darcy. Marcy Darcy from Married with Children was the original Karen. And there are probably a lot less innocent Darcy's out there than Karen's or Marcy's. And my mom's name is Karen, and she is awesome. And if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be here. This podcast wouldn't be here. She's one of the most amazing women I know. So my request is that we change the name to Darcy. So this clip goes from this Darcy who's giving a cop a hard time and trying to rush him along to a grandmother who was arrested for not paying parking tickets and wound up in jail. We are funding our government through fines. And we are actively rooting for our citizens to fail when this happens. So many people are put in the position where they're really backed into a corner. They, they plead guilty whether or not they committed a crime strictly for financial reasons. And you may think that 
that's rare, but it's not. It is a systemic problem. It's either pay a lawyer and fight it. And if you lose, you're going to spend time in jail, a decent amount of time in jail, or plead guilty, get probation, and pay a fine. And that is a decision that people face every single day. The guests that we had on the podcast last week went through the exact same situation. If he had a lawyer, if he had money to pay for a lawyer, he wouldn't be on probation. He was given the option of ratting out a friend, which he wouldn't do, paying a lawyer or pleading. If he had a lawyer, there is no way, given the circumstances, that he would be on probation. 97% of trials are determined by a plea deal. The amount of power that is in the district attorney's hands is unconscionable. And that's really where we need to make progress on this. We need to make progress on the local levels. But we need to stand united that we cannot treat our citizens like this. And we need to ask ourselves, why aren't we respected? Other countries respect their citizens. Why don't we? Why don't we demand it? This isn't about black versus white. This isn't about rich versus poor. This is about common decency and how we treat the citizens of this country. And until we all stand up and say this is unacceptable, it's going to continue to happen. And When it continues to happen, you will never know when you're going to be impacted by it, when somebody that you love is going to be impacted by it. If you're the type of person who says that they stand up for the little guy, you stand up to bullies, then you should be getting mad about this. And then you should do something. There are some great resources and organizations that are working on these issues. So... Real Justice PAC is an organization that's working to elect district attorneys who are not going to bully the citizens of the country. So I have links to that organization online. I also have a Keiko group that you can check out that has links to their organization, as well as all these other organizations working to reform the criminal justice system. So I've tried to automate wherever I can and just connect the technology to these organizations and their their news feeds and call to actions. But what I'd really like is for people at these organizations to make it really easy for the community to support their initiatives. So if there's a district attorney that the Real Justice PAC has already vetted and in your region, wouldn't it be nice to to get an alert? And I know that certain organizations have this already in place, but we need something that ties everything together. We need to get that strength and use it to progress all of these issues at once. And we can. And that's why we need something like Keiko. We need to create a community that puts the working class first, that uses technology to organize, to connect, and to strengthen the community and empower the community and use the strength of this organization to fight for the things that we all agree on. Because if you put aside party affiliation, there's so much that we can agree on. So if you haven't checked out the intro series to Keiko, definitely do that, that shares the backdrop to this vision and what it is I'm trying to do and why it's so important. Because we are, we're at a turning point. And if you look at all of these graphs, they all show the same story. And the lines are only going one way. And that's the wrong way. And it doesn't matter who's been in office. So we can't expect that to just turn around on its own. We need to do something. And we need to do something now. So 
I hope you join me, download the Keiko app, connect with me, and let me know what you think. Next week, I'm going to share parts of my interview with two of my favorite people, my mom and my dad. My background put me in a very unique position to see these two worlds. Because one side of the family lives in one, and one side of the family lives in the other. It's not right. My dad's side of the family is hard workers. All of them. My mom's side of the family, too. But my mom's side of the family has the luxury of being serial learners. So, stay tuned. Keiko the Social App. Keiko the Social App. Keiko the social app. Keiko rules. Keiko the social app. Billionaire greed. <laughs> Keiko the social app. Destroying America. Keiko the social app. T minus seven years and counting. Keiko the social app.